In today's homework lesson, we will be learning about Massachusetts Bay and the early colonies in New England. Remember to be taking notes in your history notebook and copy down what is color-coded in purple on the following slides. Since many of the early settlers who settled in this region originally came from the country of England and Europe, they named their new home in North America, wait for it, New England. The region of New England is colored in green on this map that shows the first 13 colonies. New England includes the four colonies of Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. Each colony was unique from one another depending on the people that settled this region. However, there are a few similarities that we will be discussing in relation to the overall culture, climate, resources, and jobs that were prevalent there. Keep in mind that Massachusetts Bay Colony included most of the land that is now the state of Maine for a long time until after the Revolutionary War. And New Hampshire included some of the land that is now the state of Vermont that was also shared with New York. This is why the borders of the New England colonies look so different back then than they do today. Today's lesson will be answering the four guiding questions. One, how did climate, geographic features, and other available resources distinguish the three regions from each other? Two, how did people using, use the natural resources of their region to earn a living? Three, what are the benefits of specialization and trade? And four, how did political and social life evolve in each of the three regions? So let's get started. As you can see from this map, Plymouth Colony had expanded over the years after it was first established in 1620 by the Pilgrims and was on the coast near Cape Cod. But Massachusetts was settled by another religious group in the years that followed, and this group established the town of Boston and called their large community Massachusetts Bay Colony. This group of people was called the Puritans. Massachusetts Bay Colony and, the Bo and Boston, Massachusetts were settled by the Puritans 10 years after the Pilgrims had arrived and settled Plymouth. The Puritans came in 1630. The Puritans called themselves that because they wanted to purify the Church of England. You can draw a cross or a church near your notes on Puritans since they are known for their religion. They did not want to leave the Church of England completely like the Pilgrims did, but they were forced to leave for America because they held religious services that were not approved by the Church of England and the King. And the leaders in England threatened to put these people in jail for not following the rules of the way church services were supposed to go. But the Puritans wanted to worship God the way that they believed was right. So they knew about the colonies that had already been established in North America, like Jamestown and Plymouth, which at this point in time were doing quite well. That's why they come to the New World. Puritans are known for their Puritan ethic, which was their beliefs about life that were part of their culture that continue to be part of the beliefs on which America is founded. One of those beliefs was the right for regular, everyday citizens to participate in government. You can abbreviate government with G-O-V apostrophe T. This includes farmers, artisans, and other workers running for office to represent their fellow townspeople to make laws for the local community. This means that ordinary citizens could give input in town meetings about how their community was to run. However, unlike today, Puritan laws only allowed men to vote, and you had to be a church member. Another part of the Puritan ethic that we take from here in America today is the right to an education. Puritans wanted their children to be able to read, mainly because they wanted their children to be able to read the Bible for themselves because this was very important to them. Puritan children learned at home from their mothers and also went to local school together, and their teacher would teach them at different levels no matter their age. Many of the students learned their ABCs from a horn book, which they could hold in their hand. Many of the first sentences they learned to read were from the Bible. Do you recognize one from Sign of the Beaver? So the idea of requiring students to go to, to, go to school and learn how to read actually comes from the Puritans. Harvard University, one of the very first colleges in North America, was founded in 1636. 
This is still a university that college students can attend today, and it is located in Massachusetts. Another vital part of the Puritan ethic that America is founded on is the idea of hard work. This went for men and women. They believed that everyone needed to contribute to the community, and working hard was something that pleased God and made you a valuable member of their society. Puritans did not believe in giving free handouts to people. They believed in getting what you had earned through working hard and putting in the effort. Here in America, people work hard at their jobs, and much of the time, working hard pays off. The Puritans also had strong moral beliefs that we here in America value today too. Values like honesty, self-reliance, and responsibility were all ideas that the Puritans came from England with that are still part of our American culture today. The Massachusetts Bay Colony is famous for the Salem Witch Trials, which was during the year of 1691 when a bunch of Puritans accused one another of witchcraft. The infamous Salem Witch Trials began during the spring of 1692 after a group of young girls in Salem Village, Massachusetts, claimed to be possessed by the devil and accused several local women of witchcraft. This scared a lot of Puritan people in the local villages all over Massachusetts who were already full of fear from outsiders, people who were not of the Puritan religion, moving in and settling nearby. Puritan neighbors became suspicious of one another. Witchcraft was a scary, evil thing to the Puritans, and their strict religious laws condemned such a thing. A special court, led by religious leaders, met in Salem to hear the cases. The first convicted witch, Bridget Bishop, was hanged that June. Eighteen others followed Bishop to Salem's Gallows Hill, while some 150 more men, women, and children were accused over the next several months. Go ahead and draw a picture to remind you of the Salem Witch Trials near your notes on this. You may wonder why this happened and why so many Puritans went along with this. The truth is the people were afraid. Living in North America was already a scary thing, with the potential of threat of Native American Indian attacks, news of New England or news of England going to war with France, and a smallpox outbreak that had killed many was on the minds of the Massachusetts communities. By September 1692, the craziness finally had calmed down. Though the Massachusetts General Court later canceled guilty verdicts against accused witches, bitterness stayed in the community about what had happened. And the painful legacy of the Salem Witch Trials would endure for centuries. Massachusetts Bay and the Puritans were not the only ones who settled in the New England colonies. New Hampshire's first English settlement was a small fishing outpost near present-day Rye in 1623. Over the next several years, more colonists came, and the living was rough, sometimes tough, but lumber and tall trees were good for shipbuilding. Portsmouth became a wealthy port and shipbuilding location. In 1679, New Hampshire became an official colony of England, but it would remain under the government of Massachusetts until 1741, when it became a separate colony. Connecticut was originally settled by Dutch fur traders in 1614. They sailed up the Connecticut River and built a fort near present-day Hartford. The first English settlers arrived in Connecticut in 1633 under the leadership of Reverend Thomas Hooker. They were Puritans from the Massachusetts Bay Colony, and after their arrival, several, several colonies were established, including the colony of Connecticut, Old Saybrook, Windsor, Hartford, and New Haven. Hartford quickly became an important center of government and trade. The last colony of the New England group of first colonies settled was Rhode Island. The Rhode Island colony was founded by those who wanted to escape the lack of religious tolerance found in the other New England colonies. Its founder, Roger Williams, had been banished from the Puritan churches of Massachusetts Bay because he had wanted religious tolerance and separation of church and state. Roger Williams paid the Indians for their land, as he and several others believed it was the right thing to do. 
Even though the colonies in New England were settled for different reasons, there are several characteristics about the New England colonies that group them together. These shared characteristics include geography and climate. For the most part, the colonies in New England have very hilly terrain. Terrain means the type of land. Since these colonies border the Appalachian Mountains, their hills are the foothills of the larger, higher mountains that are further west in this mountain chain. Along the Atlantic Ocean, the colonies have a rocky coastline. You won't see a whole lot of sandy beaches here. They are mostly rocky, as you can see from the photos. Go ahead now and draw a rocky coastline next to your notes about the New England region. Another similarity that the New England colonies share is their climate with mild summers, meaning not too hot, not too humid, but very cold winters. Draw a picture of a cold winter near your notes on, the, on climate. Perhaps a few snowflakes will do the trick. The New England colonies all had similar resources, both natural and human resources during colonial times because their land was similar, coastlines were similar, and climates were similar. New England boasted many, many trees and forests, so cutting down this timber to build furniture and houses or to ship across the ocean to England for a profit was a major natural resource for these colonies. All of these colonies have a coastline along the Atlantic and have many rivers, plentiful with fish, and thus fish was another major resource characteristic of New England and still is today. Take a moment to draw a fish or fisherman to capture this idea. New England featured deep harbors, providing safe havens for large ships to anchor. Because of this, many of the cities and towns along the coast became important ports for trading as the ships could be easily loaded up and unloaded in these deep harbors. Human resources included artisans and shopkeepers in many of these port cities where they could take the natural resources or traded goods and sell them to local customers. Because there was such a need for ships, Shipbuilding was a major industry in the New England colonies. Sailors were also big in the colonies, since ships needed men to sail them back and forth across the ocean. Fishing was a popular job in New England colonies, too, because so many fishermen were abundant in many of the coastal cities and towns along the New England shore. New England social and political life centered around the local town or city. Since most of the people who settled in these colonies came from a strong religious background, much of their social life revolved around church. Whole villages were set up around the local church where the community was expected to attend. This is where and why people met together on a regular basis. If you have not already drawn a quick sketch of a local New England town with a church in the center of it, go ahead and do so now. Town meetings met in the largest building in town, which was the church building most of the time. Often, elected leaders were religious, and many of the community laws were based in religious values, beliefs, and practices.